Have you ever heard of a rock called feldspar? Maybe you haven't, but if you are into collecting crystals at all, you definitely have one in your collection. Labradorite, moonstone, sunstone, and amazonite may seem pretty different from each other, but they are all members of the feldspar mineral group. Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Emily and here on my channel I make mostly crystal videos, but sometimes spiritual videos, small business videos, fun vlogs, and more. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, be sure to subscribe because I put out new videos every week. If you wanna know how my day is going, I spent almost two hours curling my hair today and as you can tell, it's not curly. And also, I was trying to print out the script for this video after I just filmed another video and printed the script no problem, but now my printer decided to die. So I printed my script on Rolo labels and my cat will be screaming throughout the video most likely. So we're just going to defy the odds and keep filming. I am super excited for today's video because this has been a long time coming. I've been talking about making this video for like a year. Today we're going to be talking about the Feldspar Mineral Group, which includes some of the most popular crystals on the market. This is definitely going to be more of a geology heavy video. In fact, it's all geology and nothing about the spiritual properties of these crystals, but don't click off just yet. It's I'm going to make this simple and as easy to understand as possible, and hopefully you will learn some cool things about these minerals. We're going to be talking about what makes these beautiful stones have all this sparkle and shimmer and flashy colors, and I think it's going to be really fun and interesting. If you are new to my channel, I just want to put out a little bit of a disclaimer. While I do have a degree in geology, I also believe in the spiritual properties of crystals and I do sell crystals myself. My content is mostly geared towards people who do collect crystals and maybe don't know much about the geology of them and are looking to learn more. I try to keep it simple in regards to the geology and easy to understand for people who don't really need to know all about the molecules and crystalline structures of things. My assumption is that for the most part, my audience is more interested in the metaphysical side. So for the geology part, I try to keep it on a need to know and fun facts basis. If you do enjoy my videos and you do want to hear more about the geology side of things and want me to get in depth, please do let me know. But for the most part, I try to keep it as simple as possible. I say all of this because if you are a scientist or a geologist and you come across my videos, I'm going to be keeping my explanations simple. Of course, I could go more in depth about things. I could get into the molecules of it all, but I don't think that's what my audience is really interested in. I do a lot of research for my videos and I use the information I've learned studying geology. But of course, if I do say something incorrectly, please do correct me in the comments. I have a degree in geology, but I am not a geology teacher. And my content is created from a crystal shop metaphysical perspective to help other crystal sellers and collectors. So that being said, let's get right into it. What is the feldspar mineral group? Feldspar is an extremely common and abundant group of minerals that make up over half of the Earth's crust. They are the most common rock forming mineral group. Feldspars are aluminum tectosilicate minerals that are categorized by their varying amounts of potassium, sodium, calcium, and aluminum. If you walk outside right now, you are most likely to see a feldspar somewhere within view. In fact, most of sand is actually composed of feldspar and quartz. Feldspars have a hardness of 6 to 6.5 out of 10 on the most scale of hardness. While there are some incredibly beautiful crystals that make up the feldspar mineral group that we're going to be talking about today, most feldspars are pretty boring and unassuming looking. Feldspars can be found in all types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. For example, feldspar is a main component of granite. Another rock that is composed of feldspar that you may know is unikite. Unikite is a metamorphically altered granite composed of pink orthoclase, feldspar, green epidote, and quartz. In geology, many rocks are classified by how much feldspar they contain because it is such a common rock forming mineral. Feldspars are classified into two different groups, which are plagioclase, which are sodium rich, and alkali feldspars, which are potassium rich. Feldspars fall on a spectrum depending on their chemical composition. Here is a chart that that shows the classification of different feldspar minerals depending on their composition and I will be using this chart to reference the different crystals that we're going to be talking about today. This chart may look really confusing at first glance but stick with me here. This chart is called a ternary diagram and it shows how these minerals are classified based on their 
amount of sodium, potassium, and calcium. You can see the potassium rich feldspars at the very top of the triangle, sodium rich at the bottom left, and calcium rich in the bottom right. Different types of feldspars will fall in different areas of this diagram depending on how much of each of these they contain. The big empty spot to the right of the diagram is a section where minerals with this specific combination of elements cannot exist stably. So you will not see feldspars with this composition. So what crystals are in the feldspar group that we will be talking about today? Today I will be talking about amazonite, sunstone, moonstone, labradorite, and belomerite. And why does any of this matter? Why are we talking about feldspars today? Of course, as a crystal collector or seller, you don't need to be knowing the exact chemical compositions of each of these different feldspars and how they form and all that, but it can help you to better understand the crystals that you work with and also help to label them correctly when you know what you're looking at. I think understanding the basics of these common mineral groups can be really helpful for identifying crystals going forward. Even if you aren't big into the geologic details of crystals and you just like the metaphysical side, it's really good to be educated on the materials that you're selling. This helps to reduce mislabeling and misinformation on the market. It's also just interesting to know things like why is sunstone sparkly and why does Labrador have so many colors? So the first crystal we're going to be talking about today is amazonite. Amazonite is a variety of potassium feldspar also known as microcline. You can see microcline at the very top of the diagram. Amazonite is distinguished by its unique blue-green color but microcline can come in white and peach colors as well. Sometimes you will see white streaks within amazonite and this is a mineral called albite which is another feldspar that you can see on the diagram. A lot of these feldspars form together. It is not uncommon to see mixes of all of these. You may have noticed that sometimes amazonite can be shimmery and this shimmer is called schiller or sheen. This effect is created by thin microscopic inclusions or layers that reflect and reflect. I knew I was gonna have a hard time saying this reflect and refract light. Schiller is the general term for this effect, but there are other types of Schiller that we will be talking about in regards to other crystals in a minute. This Schiller effect comes from within the crystal structure. It is not a feature on the surface of the stone. Next up is moonstone. There are many varieties of moonstone. Most commonly we see peach moonstone, gray or black moonstone. It can also be white or green. Moonstones are potassium rich or alkali feldspars, which you can see on this side of the chart, found between orthoclase and albite. Moonstone has a shiller very similar to amazonite, but it can also have a glowy effect to it called adolescence. Adolescence. Moonstone was named after this special feature because it resembled a moon glowing through the clouds. Adolescence is seen in moonstone that has alternating layers of albite and orthoclase. Light goes through these alternating layers and is bent, reflected, and scattered at the surface. This is the cause of that beautiful silvery flash that we see in peach and black moonstone. Here's a picture I think that shows this adolescence feature the best, but moonstone can also have shiller and this glowy feature all within the same piece. While we're talking about moonstone, I wanna mention green moonstone for a second. Green moonstone, also known as garnerite, is actually not always a moonstone. Garnerite does not have just one chemical composition and it is not recognized as a valid mineral in and of itself. Garnerite is the name for a nickel ore that can be found in multiple types of rocks, including moonstone, in which case it may have that blue flash or shiller that moonstones have. Garnerite is the result of other minerals in its surrounding area weathering nickel and leaving these deposits behind, which causes the green color. There is no definitive chemical composition for garnerite, but it can be found in rocks like moonstone and also a lot of the times serpentine. True moonstone can naturally come in a green color, but it's not super common. Most green moonstone on the market is actually garnerite, which may or may not have the composition or flash that a moonstone has. On to labradorite. I actually just filmed a whole crystal chat video about labradorite. If you wanna watch that, I'll have it linked. But labradorite is one of the most well-known and loved crystals out there. It is recognizable by its vibrant flash of colors. It is most commonly seen with blue or green flash, but labradorite can have any color flash. Labradorite with a pink or purple flash or a full rainbow flash is much less common and in higher demand. Labradorite is a plagioclase feldspar and you can see it right on the diagram here at the bottom. Now we just discussed moonstone and you may have noticed that I left rainbow moonstone out of the conversation and that is because rainbow moonstone is actually labradorite. 
You may have noticed that Rainbow Moonstone has a very different kind of flash than Peach or Black Moonstone does. It usually has a bright blue flash or even other colors like yellow or orange or purple, more similar to Labradorite. That's because this actually is white Labradorite. It isn't a true Moonstone. So what is it that makes Labradorite and Rainbow Moonstone so flashy and colorful. We discussed Schiller earlier, but Labradorite has a special type of Schiller, which is called Labradorescence. But what is actually going on inside the stone to cause this effect to happen? This is due to the presence of a miscibility gap, which we saw on the ternary diagram earlier, that big empty space. This is the area where a mineral cannot stably exist. So what happens is while the mineral is forming under certain pressure and temperature conditions, all of the elements are mixing together to form this mineral. If the elements are mixing together, this means they are under stable conditions. While the mineral is cooling and still forming, sometimes conditions can change and things are no longer stable. When conditions change, this can cause the elements to unmix and separate from each other because they are no longer stable when mixed. This results in something called an X solution, where some elements are separated from the mix. This can cause alternating layers of different types of feldspars within the crystal structure. These layers can form in flat planes and they are called exolution lamellae. The effect of labradorescence is caused by light reflecting and refracting off of these different layers. This layering within feldspar is also a type of crystal twinning. So depending on the elements in this exolution, when this happens, it can create different light effects. When it comes to labradorescence, not every single piece of labradorite is going to have this feature. The stone itself comes in varying shades of gray and the flash of color only happens when light enters the crystal structure. Labradorescence is really cool because the color that the stone flashes can change depending on the angle of it. Like I have a piece of labradorite in my collection and I thought it was like this stripy purple pattern and months later I found out it was actually a deep blue flash from the other angle. A lot of the times Labradorite has this beautiful Labradorescence, but it also has a Schiller as well. So while we're talking about Labradorite, what is Spectrolite? You may have heard of the term Spectrolite used before when referring to Labradorite. Spectrolite is the name for Labradorite coming from Finland. Sometimes Labradorite from Canada or Madagascar is incorrectly labeled Spectrolite, or it is said that if Labradorite has a bunch of different colors in it, then it's Spectrolite, but true Spectrolite only comes from Finland. And Spectrolite is identified by its more vibrant colors. It usually has full flash. And a lot of the times these flashy colors come in really cool and unique patterns. Spectrolite also tends to be a lot more expensive than typical Labradorite, but it is still Labradorite. Now, Larvakite is a stone that is often mistaken for Labradorite because it does sometimes have a bit of a blue flash and it is very dark in color like Labradorite, so I can see where the confusion comes from. But Larvakite is not one mineral. Larvakite is a rock that is composed of a couple different minerals, one of which is feldspar. You can tell that Larvakite is made of a couple different minerals because it has a very patchy appearance and it may have little flashy spots similar to Labradorite because there are feldspars in it, but it itself is not a feldspar and it is not Labradorite. Next up is Sunstone, which is a very interesting feldspar. I actually learned a ton about it while researching for this video, some things I had no idea. Sunstone can actually be found as a plagioclase or an alkali feldspar. This is a little confusing, but depending on where it's formed, it can have different chemical compositions. The name sunstone is given to this crystal based on its sparkly appearance and not one definite chemical composition, but it is always going to be a feldspar. There are just a couple different types. Some types of sunstone are actually classified as a type of labradorite. Now this can sound pretty confusing, so let's just leave it at the fact that sunstone is a type of feldspar that can be found with varying different chemical compositions. And I will have a couple articles linked in the description if you'd like to read more about this. This explains why you'll see different types of sunstone that look pretty different from each other and why sometimes sunstone looks so close to moonstone because sunstone can be on the alkali feldspar side along with moonstone, so you'll see them intermixed. So what causes the sparkles in sunstone that it is so well known for? Sunstone contains hematite, gothite, pyrite, and or copper aligned in an orientation that gives the stone a beautiful sparkling appearance when light hits it. This sparkle is a type of Schiller, again, known as aventurescence. 
named after aventuring. Aventurescence is when light hits micro plates within the stone. When it comes to sunstone, you can definitely see these little plates within the stone that are creating the sparkles, but for other minerals like amazonite and labradorite, you can't really see the crystal structure that is causing this flashy light effect. But in sunstone, it's very noticeable. Sunstone is unique compared to the other feldspars because this Schiller effect creates metallic sparkles and rare forms of sunstone can actually have a striped or lattice Schiller effect. Rainbow lattice sunstone is actually one of the coolest stones ever. I got a couple pieces at the Tucson Gem Show and they are incredible. The thickness of these inclusion layers can change the colors that are seen with this effect. A somewhat new crystal on the market is called Belomerate, also known as Russian Moonstone, also known as sunstone moonstone mix. This mineral is a plagioclase feldspar known as oligoclase. I looked up how to say this before I started filming and I'm still having a hard time. Oligoclase. You can see oligoclase is pretty close to laboratory on the feldspar chart. They're pretty similar, so it makes sense that Belomerite has the same blue flash that Labradorite does. It isn't really a mix of sunstone and moonstone, it's just another type of feldspar. According to Mindat.org, Belomerite is an unnecessary trade name for plagioclase moonstone, oligoclase, from the granitic pegmatites of northern Corellia in the White Sea area. Once you look at this ternary diagram of feldspars, it makes a lot of sense why you see all these combinations of sunstone, moonstone, why these all have similar types of flash, why they have different types of flash mixed, because they're all very similar in composition, and a lot of these different feldspars form together. So that's all I have today for you about feldspars. I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. I hope it was interesting and easy to understand. I actually expected it to be a lot more confusing, but once I started explaining it, it was pretty simple. So I have faith that you understood this and it wasn't too hard to follow. Please let me know in the comments down below if you enjoy these more geology heavy videos and what crystals or topics you would like to see me talk about next. I will continue to make both geology and spiritual videos about crystals, but your feedback does help me know which to prioritize and focus on, and it really does help me to know what you guys enjoy watching. Be sure to check out my crystal shop, CosmicGeology.com. You can use code YouTube for a discount on any order at any time. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, and comment. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.